Yo, what's up, everyone? Uh, this is Terry with College Football Stop. Welcome to my final thoughts show uh, prior to week three of college football. I'm uh, going to get into a couple things here. We got a Big Ten versus ACC matchup this weekend, um, quite a few of them. A couple other games that are going to happen this weekend that are interesting. Um, and then I'm going to get into some keys for Ohio State and some players to watch out for. Uh, so let's get into that now. Um, Starting off with the Big Ten versus ACC. So very rarely do we get this in college football. I know that it happens in college basketball a lot where there'll be like a, a division versus division weekend and those teams will play against each other. But we kind of have something like that this weekend with the Big Ten versus the ACC. Um, so we have, let's see, six games here. Um, it's Virginia versus Maryland, Louisville versus Indiana, Minnesota versus North Carolina, Northwestern versus Duke, Virginia Tech versus Rutgers, and Syracuse versus Purdue. So I'm going to kind of give my picks on those games, and then we'll dig into some other games around college football. Um, so first off, uh, I said Virginia at Maryland. Um, I think this has a chance to be a sneaky good game. Um, I don't know how good Virginia is, but I do know that uh, with Mike, Mike Loxley has that Maryland team where sometimes they can play pretty good. I mean, especially if they're playing against uh, – you know, a formidable opponent, they seem to step up and at least give an effort. So uh, they got Tualia, uh, Tagovailoa. He's a good quarterback. I think he's probably top three in the Big Ten right now. So um, that could be a good game. That's one to watch out for. I'm going to take Maryland to win that because it's at Maryland. Uh, Louisville versus Indiana. I think I'm going to take the Big Ten on this one too. And the only reason I'm going to say this, it might be a homer take, but I actually do think that Indiana has a good defense. I think that their defense was doing some good things. They have uh, the guy, Matt Gary, I think his name is, who was like kind of Jim Knowles' disciple, um, left from Ohio State last year as an assistant and is now the defensive coordinator at Indiana. So I think they have a good defense with all the guys they brought in from the portal also. So I'm going to take Indiana to win that game. Minnesota versus North Carolina, um, another one that could be a sneaky good game, but I think that North Carolina is going to win this. I think the offense with Drake May is going to be too much for Minnesota. Uh, the next one I'm not going to talk too much about, Northwestern versus Duke. Um, obviously, Duke beat Clemson. They look pretty good this year, so I think they're going to win that one easy. Um, the next one could be another sneaky good game, Virginia Tech versus Rutgers. Now, Rutgers is always a bad team every year, but Greg Schiano is a pretty good football coach, and sometimes he can get them up to play. Like, you know, They almost beat Michigan last year or the year before that, so... I mean, they can definitely come out and play a good game, and it's at Rutgers. So I, I'm going to take Rutgers to win that game. Uh, might be, I might just be favoring the Big Ten, but we'll see how it plays out. And then uh, the last one, Syracuse at Purdue. I expect Syracuse to just make quick work of Purdue, uh, win that game pretty easy. So that's it for the Big Ten versus ACC kind of challenge this weekend. Uh, I, it's super interesting just to kind of compare the two conferences. I mean, there's a chance looking at those games that the ACC wins most of them, but I don't know. I favor with the Big Ten just because I know more about those teams. Uh, so moving on to some other games around the country, I always like to talk about uh, what Penn State and Michigan's got going on. Obviously, that's our foes in the Big Ten East that you know really are the ones that are competing for the Big Ten that mo most of the times. Uh, Penn State actually has an interesting game. They play at Illinois. Um. I mean, Illinois, I don't think is as good as they were last year. They lost some guys to the draft. But I know that they have some players over there. They have uh, Burt Bielema, who's, I think, a, a pretty good football coach. Um, I mean, it could be an interesting game if the crowd is good and if um, if Drew Aller maybe doesn't have his best game. I know he's still really young in his, his football career. I don't expect that from him, though, because I think he's one of the best quarterbacks in the Big Ten, so... Um, I'm going to move on from that game now. The other one's Michigan. Like I said, they got Bowling Green coming to Ann Arbor. Um, they should make quick work of them, so shouldn't really be any issues there. All right, so moving on to a couple other games I wanted to talk about. Uh, we have Tennessee at Florida and Washington at Michigan State. I think these could be two of the best games this weekend. Um, I also know Georgia uh, plays against South Carolina, which I don't really expect that to be a game, but it could be if Spencer Rattler has a big game. Um, but moving on to, like like I said, Tennessee and Florida, I think this one has the potential to be the game of the week. Uh, Tennessee's playing at Florida. Obviously, they have a new quarterback uh, with Joe Milton, who transferred from Michigan to Tennessee. Um, and Florida has a 
Big Ten transfer also, and Graham Mertz who transferred from Wisconsin. So I mean, again, it could be a it could be a good game. Tennessee didn't look great early in their last game, but they did get better. Florida obviously has the loss to Utah already, so we'll see how that one plays out. It, uh, like I said, it has a chance to be like the game of the week in my opinion. Uh, and then the next one I talked about was Washington at Michigan State. So the trend right now that I'm talking about seems to be quarterbacks that transfer from the Big Ten. Uh, Michael Penix, the quarterback for Washington, um, transferred out from Indiana a couple years ago, went to Washington, and he's been doing really good, has worked his way up to, some people believe he's going to be a first-round draft pick. Obviously, Michigan State is a debacle right now because they have the whole thing going on with Mel Tucker where he was accused of sexual assault. I'm not going to get into it because I don't know any details about it, but I know that he's suspended right now, so it'll be interesting to see um, what they have going on. I, I think they actually have um, their their old coach stepping in as the interim coach, so we'll see how that goes. Let me see here. For like for some reason, I can't think of his name. One second, I'm going to get his name real quick. But yeah, I do think we have a really good slate of games this weekend. Um, a lot of people will put it as like that it's not a good slate of games because you know there's no big time like top ten matchups or anything like that. Uh, but I think that there could be a couple upsets. So we'll see. We'll see what we get to see this weekend. And oh, the coach I was thinking about, God, for whatever reason, couldn't think of his name. Uh, coach Mark D'Antonio. I think he actually has stepped in in some kind of role over there, and he is going to be like the interim head coach. So. I mean, he's a really good coach. We'll see if they can put together a good game plan for one week against Washington and, and take that win there. Uh, okay, so moving on from you know around the country, I want to kind of focus the rest of the time on Ohio State versus Western Kentucky. Obviously, this is not a a game that anybody expects Ohio State to lose or you know be on upset alert or anything like that. Um, but still, you know, I want to talk about it because we can learn a lot about our team this weekend. Um, things that we haven't seen so far. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was my keys to the game. And I did keys to the game for Ohio State and for Western Kentucky. Um, the first one for Ohio State, I think they need to get Kyle McCord into a rhythm. Um, last week against Youngstown State, a lot of Kyle McCord's uh, passing attempts were you know, short throws, RPOs, um, quick outs, things like that, where he could just get, get one read and get the ball out and kind of get into a rhythm of the game. Um, and then, you know, he did make a couple a couple throws where he had to read a couple different guys and then, you know, ultimately delivered a good ball. So get him into a rhythm, and I want to see him making some plays that look like they're going to work against better teams, not just uh, throwing the ball to the flats or, you know, throwing the, a little a curl and your wide receiver makes the guy miss because that's just not going to happen against the best teams. That's just, it, Those guys don't miss tackles. You know, they, they're coached just as well as Ohio State talent is just as good as Ohio State so um, I want to see some plays where the guys get open he makes some throws into some windows where um, where you know better teams will will be in better coverage so looking to see that from Kyle McCord uh, the next thing from Ohio State is going to be the decent defensive side of the ball uh, I want to see them tackle like when I say tackle I mean like don't miss any tackles um, and then fight for the ball when it's in the air. So Western Kentucky is a team that's going to throw the ball a lot. Um, I want to see these defenders getting their hand on the ball, knocking some balls away, and then when it, when they can't get there on time, because it's going to happen, get the guy to the ground. You know, first don't let don't let it be a where you miss a tackle when he gets five more yards, and then your teammates tackle him. Uh, all right. So moving on from that, uh, Western Kentucky, um, I think their keys to the game. I mean, I don't know a ton about this team, but just from what I do know about them, they they need to make sure they don't get away from what they're good at. Um, the last two teams Ohio State played, I feel like completely changed their game plan because they were playing Ohio State. They wanted to like shorten the clock, um, which is not the reason why Ohio State was not scoring a lot of points. I know that that's something that a lot of people talk about, but when, you, when you're not scoring on the drives that you have opportunities, you can't really blame it on the clock. Uh, but anyway, moving on from that, um, yeah, Western Kentucky just needs to do what they do. They like to throw the ball. Just throw the ball. Uh, run your offense. And, you know, again, I don't expect them to win, but if they're going to try to keep it close, that's what they need to do. And then I really think on defense, if they're going to win, they need to make Ohio State beat them through the air. 
Um, with Ohio State having the quarterback who's finally named the starter, they can't allow Ohio State to run all over them like they did the last team they played. I think the last team they played ran for like over 300 yards, and Ohio State will do that if you let them. They will hand the ball off, and they will beat you on the ground. So we'll see We'll see how it plays out, but that's just a couple, a couple key things for the game that I thought um, you should look out for. Um, and then speaking of looking out for things, uh, the next thing I have is players to watch out for in this game. Um, on, on Ohio State, for the offensive side of the ball, I have Kyle McCord, who obviously we, you know, our starting quarterback, our QB1. Um, watch out for him. Look at some of the throws that he makes, how he's reading the defense. Um, and, you know, if he looks comfortable back there and he, if he looks like he's in control of his team. Um, and then the next one is going to be Carnell Tate, a uh, freshman wide receiver. We've seen him make a couple plays just in the uh, – First two games, you know, you don't, usually don't see freshmen out there that much. But what I noticed from him is his route running ability and his speed after he gets the ball in his hands. I want to see them feature him a little bit more, get him some touches, and let's see what he can do with the ball in his hands. Um, and then moving on to the defensive side of the ball, um, I have Ohio State, I have Tommy Eichenberg. So this is the only one I have on here um, as a potential negative. Uh, Tommy Eichenberg is obviously a solid linebacker but this team's gonna throw the ball so we're gonna kind of see what he looks like in pass coverage um I don't, i'm assuming he's not gonna be playing too much man but you know at the same time he's gonna be out there in pass coverage and he's gonna be expected to make plays i mean he's done it in the past but he's also been exposed in the past excuse me so we'll, we'll see um if tommy eichenberg can hold his own out there uh, and then the last one I have is Davis Nick uh, This is my guy. I always tout his name just because I think that he's really the reason why uh, the Ohio State cornerback room has taken such a high step up. I think that he came in and brought a different competitiveness that they didn't have before. Um, and I think that he brought that out of Denzel Burke also. Obviously, he's not the only one. But, you know, having that guy with that mentality in the room is huge. And I think that Every single player in that entire room benefited from having Davis and Igmanos in there, even if that meant that they were not playing because he was taking the field. For example, like Jordan Hancock. He would have been the starting corner probably, but with Davis and Igmanos in there, he's not going to be the starting corner. He'll be the nickel. But I think that that benefits him. I think that that's a spot that he's really good in, and he has that tenacity to him uh, to play that spot. Um, so moving on from that, the last thing I wanted to get into was just my final score prediction. Um, I've done a lot of like shit talking all week about how I think this could be a close game. I'm not really sold on Ohio State's offense yet, but I don't. I think that Western Kentucky's defense is just going to be that bad um, that whatever Ohio State wants to do is going to work. Um, and I think that Ohio State's defense might actually be the truth this year. So you know, we thought that last year early in the year, and it showed that uh, once they played against some better teams, that it was really not that great. They were getting exposed all over the place. But I don't necessarily see weak links on our defense this year like I did last year that are going to get exposed. I think we have the athletes out there that are long, lengthy. They're, you know, they're just freak athletes all over the field. So, you know, I don't really see anyone getting exposed. I think the defense is, is going to hold their own, even in a game with an offense that's supposed to be really good. I'm going to say the final score is going to be 42 to 13. Now, I'm going to leave. That's going to what I'm going to put my final score at. But another thing that I've said all week that I am going to stand on is if Ohio State doesn't score at least 40 points this week, when I come on here next week and talk about the Notre Dame game, I'm probably going to be predicting Ohio State to lose. I hate to say that, um, but, I mean, right now they haven't shown me anything on offense that tells me that they can compete with a defense that knows what they're doing. Um, so I'm hoping that it plays, works out. I hope they score 70 instead of 42. But I don't have faith in that yet. We'll have to see how uh, how those guys are gelling and if the offense looks more like a Ryan Day offense. Uh, but I'm going to wrap this up here. Uh, thanks for watching. As always, leave a like, comment, you know, hit the subscribe button. Uh, come back for more content. Peace out.